A guy that wrestled here for what seemed like such a minute amount of time um, went public with some things. Uh, Aaron O'Brien. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he basically, you know, came out from those that don't know and said you got him fired and said that you, the deal that he had wasn't what was going on and going down. And First of all, okay, I'll make it easy. Okay. <laughs> Aaron O'Grady is a liar, okay? <laughs> and that's the gospel. Yeah. He's a liar. It's very simple the way this deal came down. Um, I seen, someone sent me a tape of Spike Dudley when he was in California. And I seen the footage of him. I'm like, this guy can go. I said, Paul, you gotta check this kid out. And he checked out the tape. I'm like, and I'm like, this guy can go. He's like, yeah, no, I love him. I love him. Boom, he brought him in. And, uh, the deal was, you know, uh, he was young, and Spike had to come, train at the dojo here once a week with me, go on the road with us, work, whatever, you know, uh, and, and that was it. He had to train at the dojo. Spike did it. After, like, two months, I was like, I really don't need you to train here, bro. You know what you're doing, you know? Yeah. He, was, he was really good. Boom, rest is history. I heard about this Aaron O'Grady, you know, um, I seen a tape of him and I, and he came from the same dojo that Spike came from in whatever part of California. I asked Spike, do you know this kid? He goes, yeah. So I go, he kind of, excuse me, he kind of reminds me of you. And yeah, a lot of people say that, you know, he's small or whatever. And he told me some good things about him. Told me a couple little bad things. I spoke to Aaron O'Grady on the phone. I spoke to Paul first, of course, and Paul said, offer him this type of deal, blah, 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 blah. The deal I offered Aaron O'Grady was, I said, I can't really get into too much money with you, because that you'll do with Paul, but you have to train here one day a week. He goes, oh, no problem, man. I'm, I'm going to have, you know, a Winnebago, and I'm going to live, and Kiff and I park in front of your dojo and live, and I go, yeah, no problem, no big deal. You know, um, uh, I said, and then you, you, you know, I can't guarantee you're going to be on our ring crew, because you'll get more money, you know, but in the beginning, you know, we'll try and squeeze you on him whenever we can. It was okay. He comes here his first day. You know, we get in the, in the ring. I stretched him. You know, that's just the way I am. I did the same thing with Spike. I did as soon as this dojo opened. When me and Perry were in here. Some guys from Bubba Ray Dudley to, to, to when Devon Dudley started. You name them, they got stretched. Period. First day, right in the ring. That's the way we work. He took offense. You know, I mean, he, I could see he wasn't happy with it. I mean, come on, fight back. You know, I didn't beat him up. Yeah. I didn't punch him. I out wrestled him on a mat, kept him on his back, and screamed at him to get off his back. Right. Made him tap out from every angle you can imagine, and that's it. Right. You know, I mean, it's not that I outweighed him or I was bigger than him. It's just, it doesn't matter. That's the way we do things here. Yeah. If you can stretch me, stretch me. I'll tap. There's no shame in tapping while you're training. No big deal. It happens all the time. Right. So he came a couple more times, and then I could see he wasn't happy. And I didn't keep beating him up on a ring, the ring, you know. Right. And then he, I'd see him at the gym, and I trained him. There's a Gold's gym near here. It thumbs off. And I trained, thank you. And I trained there, and, and I told him, I said, listen, I can talk to the manager there. I know the guy hooked you up with a good membership, you know, cheap, you know. It's a really good gym. Cool, thanks. I hook him up. I would see him in the gym every once in a while. We'd be on the road. He didn't go on the road with me, but I'd say, okay, listen, man, we can squeeze you on ring crew this time. You know, you get a little more money, blah, blah, blah. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I find out from our ring crew chief <laughs> that uh, he was a little lazy in the ring crew department. Yeah. You know, I mean, Bam Bam Bigelow had an independent show that he ran in New Jersey. And they were short, they, they, they were short on people helping out. And uh, before the people got in the arena, the ring crew set up the ring. Aaron was there. It was his first show. It was before he, it was supposed to start for ECW that weekend, but that day, Bam Bam rented out ECW's ring crew and ring. They set the ring up, so Bam Bam says to the ring crew, listen, guys, can you help me out setting up chairs? We don't have nobody helping out. No problem. Ring crew setting up chairs. Bam Bam Bigelow setting up chairs. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Aaron O'Grady <laughs> sat down and watched. Wow. That's key. Yeah. I hear about this. No problem. I have one of my guys go to him and talk to him. He apologizes. But let me explain. He has an excuse, whatever. I don't know. A couple weeks go by. I put him on ring crew again. Aaron O'Grady uh, was hungover, whatever. He couldn't help build the ring. Ring crew now wants to beat his ass. <laughs> I tell him, no, no, no. Leave him alone. 
who were in Pittsburgh. They wanted to leave him in Pittsburgh. It happened at the pay-per-view in Pittsburgh. Uh, they were that ring crew was there real early setting shit up. Shane Douglas, at the time, was number one contender for the world heavyweight belt against Bam Bam Bigelow in his hometown of Pittsburgh. Shane Douglas is helping carry in soda to help the concession people. He was there real early. I wasn't there to see this, but I heard this. Aaron O'Grady slept in the bleachers while this was happening. That's three fucking strikes, brother. And I don't play fucking baseball. And, you know, that's three strikes. So, ring crew again said, you, you didn't want to do nothing. Yeah. So I spoke to Paul. I said, listen, I'm taking this kid off ring crew. Oh, the other thing was, after a while now, he wasn't even coming to the dojo to train. He's sitting at Winnebago, never, never see him. I'd see him at Gold's gym, and that was a big gym. I know everybody in the gym. Yeah. And he would peek out the fucking, I'd come in, and he'd wait till I leave and scoot out the door. <laughs> so I gave yeah. me, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I'm like, hey, no problem, but you want to avoid me? I don't give a fuck, you know? Yeah. So, uh, what are we doing in Winnebago? You just, you just see a little light on in there, you know, and he would just be chilling, I guess, <laughs> watching TV or jacking off, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, so um, I said, I said, Paul, listen, I'm going to let you know, I, you know, I don't want this kid training at my dojo. And, uh, you know, he's not a ring crew no more, and that's the bottom line. I said, you know, it's up to you. You want to, you know, he was a good wrestler in the ring. The kid was capable, you know, and I feel he's got tons of potential, tons of potential. I really do. You know, I mean, I wouldn't have brought him in here. I wouldn't have hired him if I didn't think so, right? Yeah. So on my name, you know. So uh, Paul said, all right, all right, no problem. You know, tell him if he wants to come to the shows, no problem. I'll, I'll, you know, book him or whatever, whatever. Maybe, maybe not. I'm like, okay. So he came in here, sat in this other office, and told him, you know, you done fucked up too much. I can't, you know, that's it. You can't train in here no more. He wasn't training a lot anyway in here. Yeah. I don't care if you keep the Winnebago outside, I don't give a fuck, I don't own the street. Yeah. They said, you're no longer doing ring crew. He goes, okay, so I'm fired? I didn't say you're fired, I'm not firing you. Know, if you want to go to the show, that's Paul's prerogative if he wants to book you or not. You know, I, you know, I'm just telling you, from my end, I don't want you dealing with my people. That's it. So he looks at me, gets up and walks out. No problem. Next thing I know, I hear he's on his way back to California. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. They're just burying me everywhere he goes. Yeah. This kid's an idiot. So, I mean, you know, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, that's the truth of the matter. Right. I didn't fire him. He had said, I called him on the phone because I heard that they did some stupid little gimmick thing with a guy dressed yeah. like me, whatever. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I really do. I think it's funny. Get me over. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Act like me all you want. I don't give a shit what you do. Just mention my name. So, uh... Got people out there know who has it. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. great. So, I, I called him. I said, what's the deal? I mean, you think you're funny or some shit? I said, you know, when you were here, you did everything just about kiss my ass, right? But, you know, now you're going to act like a badass because you're a couple thousand miles uh -huh. away. Yeah. You know, and he's like, no, that's not the case. You live your gimmick. I go, what? Well, you live your gimmick. I go, well, I really don't have a gimmick. Yeah. I had one, yeah. but I don't know more. I said, I don't know, maybe I do. Maybe because you only see me around the industry. Maybe that's why you think I live my gimmick. Yeah. Nah, you know, whatever, uh, you know, I don't care. You know, uh, so you're a big shot because you can stretch me. What are you talking about? <laughs> First day I was there, you stretched me. Bro, that was like six months ago, relax. Yeah. Do that to everybody. You know, lighten up, kid. I know you're not sensitive. Yeah. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> you know, you know, hang me from a tree, right? Yeah. You know, like a little puss. So, uh, I'm sorry. You yeah. know, <laughs> you know, I said, listen, just, you know, don't fuck with me, okay? And that's it. Just don't. Trust me, I don't play this dumb shit. Right. Now you're getting into reality, and that's not good for you, okay? Right. Um, don't threaten me. I go, what? Don't threaten you. <laughs> so, and then, and then, I don't know, somehow we got on the subject of money. Oh, because he said to me that I, I got him fired. I was jealous of the push Paul was going to give him. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah, not, no, bullshit. Yeah. You know, what are you talking about? Why would I be jealous? You're, you know, you're an insignificant thing in this company right now. Why would I even care? I got you hired. Why would I be jealous? Right. I have a pretty good rock-solid job. You know, I think you were jealous of what Paul was going to do for me. I said, bro, let's be honest. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, I've made more money last year in this company than you're going to probably make in the next six, seven years combined. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's not about money. I go, fuck, it ain't. <laughs> it's business, ain't it? I mean, I'm not in this you know, for love, you know? So, I mean, that was basically the gist of it. And then I hear he's going online and go online with fucking Errol Grady and have fun. <laughs> yeah. Listen, talk about Taz and his misery with. It wasn't, I mean, it was a joke. You guys wouldn't have seen oh, yeah, it. I mean, right. you know the way yeah. we do things here. I mean, it ain't just been talking shit. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody in ECW want to about kill this kid now. Because, <laughs> you know, he's talking about the cancer of the locker room. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, yeah. no, I mean, I, 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 I didn't have the kid fired at all. I just couldn't have him trained at my dojo because I didn't like his work ethic. Right. And I, I didn't want that to be a cancer, all kidding aside, to spread to my younger students. Yeah. You know, that's, that's bad. You could ask anybody else. I mean, yeah. whatever. Um, but I don't wish. Let me just say, I don't wish the kid bad luck. I believe in karma, like I said earlier, and I don't. And I don't. I don't believe it. I don't believe in. Uh, I don't believe in that. And and I, and I think he's a hell of a credible wrestler. Ain't no doubt about it, and all that stuff. But uh, uh, he's not welcome in our company no more.